This video goes with section 85 of Hanson and Quinn's Greek, an intensive course, and it tells you about verbs with contracted futures. You can find this lesson in Hanson and Quinn on page 268. Verbs with contracted futures are verbs that have a slightly unusual second principal part. You've gotten used to the fairly regular principal parts of luo type verbs, and you've recently learned how to handle verbs with first principal parts that require you to do some contractions, like epsilon contract verbs, like poieo. Well, some verbs, and meno, meno, emena, memeneka is one of them, have a second principal part that is unusual. So you can see that the second principal part of meno has an unusual accent. It has an omega at the end, which is what you're used to, but it doesn't have recessive accent. There's a circumflex over that omega. And that's because the second principal part of meno is actually a contracted version of meneo. But by convention, we see this in lexica and in our vocabularies as meno, because nearly every single contracted second principal part is like poieo, is an epsilon contract. So we don't need to leave it uncontracted to see which kind it is. You can simply assume, unless there's a note in some other way, that that is an epsilon contract when you see this kind of accent on the second principal part. And that's how you know that you're looking at a verb with a contracted future, a non-recessive second principal part. All you need to do is remember all your rules for epsilon contract verbs. With future contracts, we're really only looking at the things that we have to do with the second principal part. And right now, those things are only the indicative future, active and middle, and the participle future, active and middle. Remember, everything that you do future passive comes from the sixth principal part. So we don't have to worry about that with a strange second principal part. All we have to work on is the active and the middle of the indicative and the participle. And then if you simply remember everything that you did for epsilon contract verbs with the things from the first principal part, you already know everything you need to know here since future endings are like present endings but using the second principal part. So with the future indicative active, we're going to take the second principal part plus the endings, and here's our example verb, and those endings are o ace a amen eta usi, except this time they're going to combine with that epsilon that's at the end of the stem that we can't quite see in the second principal part of meno. And we're going to remember to do the contraction. And so the endings we end up with are o ace a umen eta usi. Then we're going to put our accent on with recessive rules, but also remembering the rules for contraction. So let's see what happens when we do that. So here is the uncontracted stem that you have to understand is there in the second principal part, plus the endings. And what you get is these combinations once you contract it. And then remember that the rule for recessive accent with contractions is that you think about where the accent would have been on the uncontracted form, and then you make sure that the accent stays on the syllable that it would have been even in the contraction. And so we get our final forms, meno, menes, mene, menumen, meneta, menusi. I will stay, you will stay, she will stay, we will stay, y'all will stay, and they will stay. And of course, if you think about it, the only difference between these future indicatives 
and the present indicatives is where the accent is. And so this is one of the reasons that I am so insistent that you learn the rules for accent and that you keep them very carefully with your verb forms. Let's move on to the future indicative middle. And it's the same thing. All the things you already know about epsilon contracts with the first principal part, you're now going to apply to the second principal part. So you take that principal part and you add the endings, um, but we're going to have that epsilon to contract them with, and you do that contraction and you get these endings with the epsilon combined with the vowel at the beginning of each of these endings. And then you think about the accent, which is recessive with contraction rules. So let's do that with the future indicative middle of meno. So we're going to need that uncontracted stem that's hiding there in the second principal part. We'll add the endings for the future indicative middle. We'll do the contraction. We'll remember that we do recessive accent on the uncontracted form to come up with what the accent on the contracted form will be. And then we have menumai, mene or mene, menetai, menumitha, menestha, and menuntai. Now I think meno actually only really ever appears in the active, so I'm not going to translate these, um, but you know how to translate the middle. These endings are still what you need to have for other verbs that do use the middle with a future contract with a second principal part like this. Remember, you need to check the context for the second person singular middle of the indicative and the third person singular active of the indicative because they have the same form. The future participle active, again, uses the rules and endings that we know from epsilon contracts in the, with the first principal part. And so we will get epsilon plus the endings of the participle, the active ones. We'll do the contraction. And so we'll get these endings, on, usa, un. And when we do the same operation with meno, the second principal part stem, which uncontracted is mene, and we do the contraction, and then we remember about the accent, and we put the accent on the uncontracted form, and then finally see what that means for the contracted form, we get menon, menusa, menun. And when you go to the genitive, we get menuntos, menuses, menuntos. And that just leaves the future participle middle. Same rules, second principle part in the endings, which means combining that epsilon with the endings of the participle, doing the contraction, and so you get umenos, umene, umenon, with our hidden stem there from the second principle part, that becomes mene omenos, mene omene, mene omenon, but we need to contract them and we need to do the accent thing where we remember to put it on the uncontracted form and then make sure that that accent stays where it belongs on the contracted form. And so we get menumenos, menumene, menumenon. And there you have it. That should be what you need to know for verbs with contracted futures. They're really quite common. The other one from this chapter is angelo, whose second principal part is angelo.